Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this 21st Sunday after Pentecost. It is good to be with you today. Happy MEA weekend, last day of MEA for the families that are here today. Welcome. I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin our service with a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. To you, O oh God, all hearts are open. To you, all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your glory. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth for the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. We sing our gathering song, number 583, Take My Life That I May Be. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
You may be seated. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 45, verses 1 through 7. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name for the sake of my servant Jacob, and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Beside me there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved in God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the God and of the Lord, for in spite of the persecution you received the word and the joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has surrounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place in your faith in God, has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we have been among you, and how you turn to God from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? 
Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <coughs> so over the last three weeks, we have been following Jesus in the moments just after his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, or Palm Sunday as we know it. We've heard Jesus tell three different parables in response to a question about where he receives his authority. And each of those parables has progressively angered his audience more and more. By the end of the second parable, they were wanting to arrest him. And now, after the third parable, the parable of the wedding banquet, which we heard last week, they are ready to set a plan in motion. And so here we find ourselves in what would have been roughly Monday of Holy Week, just a few days before the Last Supper, which of course will be followed by the arrest of Jesus. So here the plot begins. A trap is set. And the Pharisees find themselves working alongside an unlikely ally as they set out to bring down this radical leader. The Pharisees team up with the Herodians. The Pharisees and the Herodians are on seemingly opposite sides of a political discourse. The Pharisees, as a Jewish sect, were opposed to the Roman Empire and to the government because they, as religious leaders, owe their allegiance to God and to God alone. But that was not what the Roman Empire was asking of them. The Herodians are followers of Herod Antipas, who was the son of King Herod. The Herodians were collaborators with the empire working with their government. But these two opposing groups had one thing in common, their opposition to Jesus and all of the trouble that he had been stirring up since he arrived. And they both wanted him out of their hair, and so they joined forces around this thing that they agreed upon to approach Jesus in the temple and to ask him a question. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the government? To the governor, excuse me. So now there are several important layers to this question and encounter. One layer is that Jesus immediately recognizes this as a trap. If he says that it is lawful to pay taxes to the governor, he offends the Pharisees and all of the crowds that are gathered at the temple because it shows favor toward the empire, to the imperial occupation that they live under from this empire that came from Rome. But if he says that it is not lawful, he offends the Herodians who will report him to the authorities and likely charge him with sedition, which is an offense punishable by death on a cross. They will succeed a few days later. But either way, no matter which answer Jesus picks, they're going to be mad. And he is trapped. But... Instead of answering them, Jesus asks them to show him a coin 
that was used for the temple tax. And they pull out a denarius. So here's where another interesting layer comes into this story. Sometime in the last 24 hours or so, Jesus had driven the money changers out of the temple, flipping tables and sending their blasphemous coins scattering across the floor of the temple. Now, money changers, the people who were driven out, were needed because graven images, like images on coins, were not allowed inside the temple. No images of God, no images of saints, and certainly no images of political leaders engraved on the coins used for the temple tax. And so people would exchange their Roman coins for Jewish coins without images on them for use at the temple specifically for the temple tax. So now here are these religious and civic leaders standing in the temple with one of those very coins in their pocket, in their hand. You know, the, the, the ones that they know that they are not supposed to have in that place. And so... You hypocrites, <laughs> they are busted for breaking their own rules that they were enforcing with the money changers at the temple. And then Jesus asks, whose image is on that coin? The emperor's. And then comes Jesus' answer to their question. Then give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God. Instead of all or nothing in either direction, Jesus said both. In other words, Jesus said, give the emperor the things that bear his image and do the same for God. But tell me, who bears God's image? We do. Earlier this week, here at Martha Sica, we hosted a concert and a presentation by Karen Gunderson, who has recently been serving as an English teacher in an Afghan refugee settlement in Albania. In her presentation, she shared many stories from her students stories of where her students came from, how they got there, why they had to leave their homes, and the burdens and traumas they carry, along with the everyday joys that they experience. In the news, we often only hear very disembodied stories, foreign or vague experiences in which people are reduced to numbers and statistics, or their experiences just seem so far from our own that we almost don't think of them as human. I think sometimes we forget when watching the news about events in places other than right here that those statistics and numbers and figures are real people living real lives and bearing the very real image of God. The power in the stories that we heard on Thursday night was not in the opinions or political stances, but in the way that it humanized these families. It was a powerful reminder of the presence of the image of God in all people. In his answer to the Pharisee and the Herodians, Jesus is making the point that everything and everyone bears the image of God, including Caesar and his coins, 
including our political leaders, our enemies, our friends. And next week, Jesus is going to tell us that we are to love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And that to do this, to love God and to love our neighbor above all else. Since God created it all and we engage with it all, our faith and our civic lives are not really separate. They are bound together because it all belongs to God. All of it. Our faith, our actions, our beliefs, our politics, our whole lives should reflect love of God and love of neighbor. So how do we do that? How do we love our neighbors, whether they are in Afghanistan, Israel, Palestine, the U.S., or even Wasika, Waterville? The first step is to remember that they bear the image of God. So that as we form our actions our words, our responses to every single person that is placed in our path, we can keep asking ourselves, how do I love God in this moment, in this person? In all times and all places, May we continuously seek the face of God in others and strive to love God, to love all people as God loves them. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our hymn of the day, number 580, How Clear Is Our Vocation, Lord.
called Church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, as only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Faithful God, your spirit animates the church throughout the world and binds believers near and far into the body of Christ. Equip us for the work of faith and enlarge our hearts for the labor of love. Hear us, O oh God. Creating God, the sea roars, the earth rejoices, and the heavens are glad at the wonder of all that you have made. Bless the work of ecologists and conservations, and all those who safeguard the riches of creation, and be with all experiencing natural disasters, such as earthquakes, fires, Hear us, O oh God. Sovereign God, you rule, your rule and authority is over the cosmos. As you once worked through the ruler Cyrus for the good of your people, accomplish your purposes through the work of elected leaders and public servants. Guide them with your wisdom and your compassion. Hear us, O oh God. Caring God, your arms enfold all who are lonely, oppressed, despairing, sick, and suffering. We remember before you especially all those who are named in our prayer list, and all who we name before you now, either aloud or in our hearts. mercy on all whom this world has neglected, abandoned, and forgotten, that they may know your joy. Hear us, O God. Almighty God, all our life belongs to you. When earthly idols threaten to lead your church astray, remind us that you alone are the source of our eternal hope. Direct the work of church treasurers, councils, and all who manage financial matters. Hear us, O oh God. Amen. Everlasting God, the saints of every age have sung your praise and shared your word. We give you thanks for their witness and pray that we may join them as citizens of your unending kingdom. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, spoken and left unspoken, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share some peace with one another.
wants a special pastor handshake. <laughs> Peace be with you. <laughs> with our offering and a different rendition of Take My Life That I May Be.
sending out a message to all of the parents later this week. <laughs> Uh, this Saturday is our 5th grade communion milestone retreat that will be from 9 to 11 at Faith. It is for both congregations together. Um, and so if you are participating in that, let me know. <laughs> and um, the next Sunday, or the next morning, next Sunday, is Reformation Sunday. And we will also be celebrating our communion milestone in worship that morning. The color of the day is red, so if you're feeling festive, you can wear red for Reformation next week. Red is the color of the Holy Spirit, by the way. Uh, coming up, we have our Ludafisk dinner on November 5th. Volunteers always welcome. There's sign-up sheets on the table in the back room now. <coughs> um, and then Faith has its Election Day dinner just two days later on November 7th, which... 4.30 to 7, there will be pulled, for, pulled, pulled, fork. <laughs> pulled pork and other goodies available. So be sure to drive through for that and to come here on Sunday for delicious, delicious Scandinavian dinner. Are there any announcements that I am missing? Um, on, on the way out, I have made some spiders for... The kids and I were going to make spiders, and they didn't turn out. But anyway, there's spiders <laughs> back there. They have pretzels in them and rolls. So oh, spider treats. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I thought, you know, with the ladybugs and the box elder bugs, maybe we all need spiders. <laughs> so, so help yourself to one, please. There's, I don't know if there's going to be enough for everybody, but help yourself on the way out. All right, there are spider treats on the way back. Not actual spiders, just tasty ones. <laughs> Any other announcements to share that I've seen? Sunday school will be after church. Sunday school after church today. Stick around, have some fun, and learn some things together. All right, are there any milestones to share today? Had an 11th birthday yesterday. <laughs> Double digits again. <laughs> yeah, my son. My daughter's birthday was yesterday. <laughs> Your daughter's birthday was yesterday. And milestones.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Thank you.